And now, if you would, let me introduce you to my world record leg trap. Hey, folks, do me a favor. Practice CPR, catch, photo, and release. The future of fishing is truly in your hands. The summer sun never sets upon the Alaskan pike of the Yunoko, in the heart of breathtaking Alaska. Evenings will be shared reliving the battles of Monster Pike. The midnight sun trophy pike hunt is on aboard the 67-foot luxury houseboat, and you're in command. If you're not, you should be. Contact the Midnight Sun Trophy Pike Adventures by calling 800-440-7453 or email them at mstpa50 at gmail.com. Hi everyone, Bob Nusikomer here for Grant Rods. You know, musky fishing's a tough deal, and the job's not done till she's in the bag. Well, how do you do that? It's pretty simple. You need big dog rods from Grant Rods. For your next rod, call them at 847-577-0848. Building custom rods since 1983. Well, here we are again, folks. Um, <laughs> we're interactive. We're live. It is what it is. Welcome to tonight's show. Uh, tonight's show is subject is directly re reflective of a conversation that I had with some folks earlier uh, on the weekend. I had some people call me up and ask me, how in the world do you understand how to make the mystery of Lake of the Woods work for you? And I quite frankly, I said to them, what do you mean make it work for me? And they said, well, we go up there and we get blown around and pushed around and all of these things and we can't seem to make it work. So tonight we're going to discuss the, the ramifications, if you will, of currents on that big body of water up there, Lake of the Woods. If you would, please get a hold of your friends. Let them know we're live right now. Uh, pass the information on after the show is over. You guys have done a great job. Again, as an aggregate account last week, we were, uh, we were hovering, again, over 3,000 viewers on the show. So quite frankly, we're pretty happy with that. And we want to see it grow, though. And uh, something else, too. Our YouTube channel, um, you can find uh, Fishing Sticks, YouTube Fishing Sticks TV. Uh, you can see the shows in the aftermarket there. And you can also see them over on uh, the Simply Fishing uh, TV uh, YouTube channel. And if you email me, I'll give you the direct links to those. We try to post them on the Facebook page. We try to keep you guys aware of what's going on and uh, try to keep you in the circle, if you will. We, we need your help, and we appreciate all the help you've been giving us. Tonight, like I said, we're going to be talking about this region of the lake. It's a very large body of water. Now, Lake of the Woods has a current, and the current runs south to north. Now, that's really southeast to northwest. But truth of it is, when the winds blow on this lake, it is crazy, really crazy. And um, how you deal with it um, can make all the difference in the world in terms of whether or not you're going to catch a fish. And we want you to catch fish. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And when you're on there, you don't want to be missing those small little isolated structure areas. Those isolated structure areas are the ones that you're going down the lake and you see those little rocks sticking up out of the water. Well, beneath that rock, sometimes there's a wealth of goodness. The monster you're looking for is up on top of that and they're relative to it. So quite frankly, you don't want to be passing any of those spots up. You have to land right in them too. <laughs> well, okay, so we get to have a little bit of fun, nonetheless. And we are gator fishing, aren't we? I mean, after all, we're fishing those big toothy critters. They can be 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 feet long. Uh, <laughs> that little piece right there was uh, actually, I was throwing a hookless giant jackpot and had some fun with 
uh, crocodiles down in Brazil. And boy, wouldn't they be fun to have them up here. All right, let's take a look at what we're talking about. We're going to start out by looking at an area of the lake, like I said. It is the Bishop Point area. Okay, now this is what Bishop Point would be if you were to encompass the point itself. The currents that come through here can influence this point dramatically. You've got a little bit of a wash going right through here. That current can come through. It's not much, but it can lead to fish sitting right there. If the winds are blowing up from the south, these reefs right here get locked in, and the water, the water backs right up in here and turns before it comes out of here. Incredible little spot. If we look over here, this is another spot that gives you a great opportunity. Now these are big boulder areas. These are very long structure points. They're not small. Um, it's going to take you probably, probably a solid 35-40 minutes to comb this and comb it effectively. But if you do it under the right conditions, it's amazing. Totally amazing. This is really hard to find. And if you get a low water, this is almost a dangerous little spot right here. But I guarantee you, if you've got a, a walking bait on or a topwater bait that you can throw a great distance out there, you want to pull a couple over the top of that. It works wonders. If we go up the lake just a little bit, we don't have to go very far. We're going to move you up right here. This is very, very productive. Very productive. Um, mostly when the current is coming back down the system, mostly when the current is coming this way, it'll have a tendency to set fish up on this area right here. And they really lock on that hard breaking point. There's nothing there. There's no cabbage, anything like that. It's just a hard wall point and those fish will lock right up on it. They don't stay there long. None of these current spots generally hold fish very long. They give you opportunities and then those opportunities close and you need to be prepared to move on. This is one of my favorite spots if I'm down in this region. It again, fairly large. You want to make long casts on it. You want to try to cover it quickly. If the fish are there and active, you're going to get an opportunity at them. Um, and if that's the case, you'll know they're up on top of it and you'll be able to get response from the fish relatively quickly. This is a sleeper. Now, it's not a sleeper in terms of the map. If you look at the map, it quite frankly looks pretty inviting. But this little area right here, I had, I had uh, Coach Olson in here one night throwing a skitter critter. And uh, Coach picked up on a fish that was about 52 or 53 inches in the dead of night. We were fishing under lights. And uh, quite frankly, the size, the rocks that you've got in here are about half the size of Volkswagens. So you've got huge rock structures in here. And, the, and to be honest with you, the lower the water gets, the better this spot right here seems to play. Let's go further up into the lake. I was showing you this before we had the issue. This is one of the only spots I have marked on an entire map, any place. And it is a very, very fond spot for me. Um, those of the anglers that know me and know the countless hours I've spent in this region know that 33, buoy 33, is one of my go-to spots. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, as it's probably many people's go-to spots. But when people come in here to fish this, this is all they focus on right here. Okay, just the very top. And that in and of itself can play pretty nicely, but there's more to this area than just the top of that. This is a hard little spot to find. If you're pulling crankbaits, you're pulling crankbaits that run about 7 to 10 feet deep, you'll bang these rocks. What happens is these people come in here and they beat up on, this, on the top of the reef itself. They're beating up on this, okay? That's what they're hitting and they're hitting it constantly. Well, these fish, these fish have a tendency to say, nope, I don't like that and I'm going to back up here. They don't like that and they back off to here or they back off to here. Those are the two areas that when the pressure is hard in this area, you want to be looking at. 
Another spot that's right here, this is a spot that, that quite frankly, I caught one of the biggest hybrids I've caught on Lake of the Woods right here. A 49 and a half inch hybrid right here. This little reef, this little rock, actually has a saddle going through it. Let me see if I can do this for you. It actually has a saddle going through it, right through here. This is a saddle. There's cabbage in there. Uh, it's the big tobacco leaf cabbage, and these fish will lock right up on it. Now, that hybrid was out here. She wasn't on the saddle itself. She was right there. And that makes a lot of difference when it, when it comes down to actually, uh, actually fishing the spot. Learn to fish it thoroughly. You will do really, really well. Oh, one of the things I want to tell you about before we get off of 33, and again, don't look for it on the map. You're not going to find 33 on your map. But you see the buoy right here? doesn't matter what buoy it is. Let's just use this buoy for example. The buoys have a tendency to indicate to you the direction and the strength of current in an area. So if that buoy is laid over, you more than likely have some current going through there, unless you've got extremely low water and the buoys are actually slack. So be aware of that. But if the buoys are taut to their chains and they're laid over, that's giving you a good indicator that you've got nice current coming through here. This would look like a real magic place right here. I'll be honest with you, I've never caught a fish off that spot. Not once. And there's probably people who have. I just haven't. You can only fish so many spots in a day, and you choose them as wisely as you possibly can. However, this, that saddle right there, when the current's pushing through here, that saddle is magic, absolute magic. This is one of my favorite spots coming down this zone. Now, the zone we're talking about, again, is funneled. This area, when we, if we pulled out on the map, if we pulled way, way out on the map, let me do that for you real quick. I'm going to pull out of the map real, real quick. This area that we're talking about is funneled. It's, it's way out. There's all kinds of, from the, from the Bishop Point buoy up, all the way up through that narrows area up in there, you're going to have the type of structural elements we're talking about. And that's what we're working. We're working our way up through that narrow region. So again, I'll just reiterate real quick, this spot right here is nice. Now, another thing I want to tell you about this spot is it, it's elongated and lays this direction. It's kind of a camelback, and it's a humpback, actually. And that rock right there will hold fish on the back side of it just as much as it will on the front. This right here is what we call the camelbacks. This when the current is in the system, and I mean a lot of current, and it's coming up from the south and it's being pushed up into this zone, the current comes up into here, it'll, it'll work its way past 33, it'll come up, it'll go up into here, and it turns like this, and it kind of back eddies right in here before it continues going on in. There's some magic under here. There's an underwater point that comes out there's an underwater little point that comes out right here, and it locks that water. This is deep. This is real deep on the face of this, and it's vertical. It's got a shelf out in front of it. We pull JP6s on there, and uh, it's an amazing little spot to pull, to pull jerk baits. This is also topwater heaven. If you're coming up on this and it's late in the evening, there's three or four different saddles in here. There's a saddle there. There's a saddle there. There's a saddle there, and this saddle in here has got vegetation in it. So, at times, we can slide the boat through here if we have high water. We don't generally try it, but if we come in here and you make a long cast across the top of this, you can know real quick what you've got in there in terms of fish because they show really fast. Now, I'm not doing that in the middle of the day. I'm doing that prime time night. I'm going in there when, it's, when the conditions are such that it's conducive to be there. I've got my current element. I've got my low light element. I have all the things that I'm looking for. And if I don't find them here, again, what did I tell you about down here? These fish move off of these spots. They're being pressured. These fish down here move. They come out to these spots because they're being pressured. Same as here. There's so many people fishing through this region that if there's a lot of people banging on this, Go right here.
Go over here and look at these isolated spots. Look at the points right here. You have, it's not exactly a saddle, but you have a substructure off the end of a point, so you have a lot of little complex going on right there that the fish can relate to. Once we're done with this region, I have seen a lot of people do this, and I'm not fond of it at all, but I've seen a lot of people fish mile or more fish through here. I'm, it's just not my cup of tea. This side is a little bit more attractive for me in terms of mile or more fish, but you have a lot of water to cover before you get to anything I consider good, and I consider this good right here. And you want to come all the way down into here when you fish it. All the way down in there. There's cabbage in here. There's oftentimes there's coontail a little bit deeper on this spot right here. And it's a sleeper. I mean, it really is a sleeper. Um, this too. Off the beaten path. Isolated. People aren't looking at it on the map. One of the biggest fish I've seen in the region has been right there. Now, I don't see a lot of fish there. I see occasional fish there, but the fish I see there warrant my return. If we go up the lake a little bit more, um, I catch fish here, but I'm catching smaller fish here. I'm not catching 50-inch fish here. I'm catching the 40 class. I'm not catching big fish. Now, that's not to say that somebody else won't. It's to say that I'm not successful at catching big fish there. This, however, I can't tell you how many big fish I've taken off that point. And again, um, if you're pulling deep water crankbaits, which I like to pull on here, I like to come up to these structures like this and literally pull a crankbait that runs about six, eight, maybe 10 feet deep and just really comb them. And you'll find yourself ticking cabbage and ticking coontail as you do it. And that's what those fish are down there living in. They're relating to that vegetation that's down in there. If you come up just a little bit further up on the lake, you get to a spot right here called the Whirlpool. Now, you can generally take your boat through the Whirlpool with your trolling motor trimmed up, I mean with your big motor trimmed up and on your trolling motor. However, I certainly wouldn't do it. I would fish the bejesus out of this before I did anything. This rock right here, this reef right here, is going to be the highest point of that saddle. This is literally a saddle right here, running from point to point. That's a saddle. And what we like to do is stay way out here and throw way back into this. And we bring our lures out. If we don't contact here, then we will take our boat and we will go through here and upon doing so, we're fishing this direction. Okay, we're fishing back against that structure. We're drawing those fish out of the little pocket that's back here up on the top of that shallow water. Um, the Whirlpool, if it's really been super windy, um, the Whirlpool is just that. It's literally one big vortex in there. So if that's the case, you get in there, don't be afraid to fish the face of it on the two corners. You're going to fish all the way across this, but you want to tap on for sure this corner and this corner. You want to definitely hit those corners because the fish, there's so much current in there, those fish will pull back off those edges. This is a little sleeper. Um, it is a buoy. It's a buoy most people go by. Um, this is a day marker here. So when you come out, it's going to be a big white day marker you'll see. This comes way out. This is a nice spot, really nice spot. Um, taking many, many fish here. I haven't taken as many fish here. I've caught a couple, but not near as many. And I think it's because this, this breaks into this vein. Um, it, it seems to be to me to be a little bit more productive. Here's another piece of note, um, and I'm sure people fish this. Uh, I've never caught a fish off the day marker. As many times as I've been in there, I've not been able to pull a fish off that day marker. I just simply can't do it. This reef, this this is a saddle again right here. It's amazing. It has cabbage on it. Uh, there's cabbage on this side here. And there's cabbage on this inside turn right here. This is an amazing spot. 
you've got to be very cautious when you come in. Come wide on this. Come into here. I like to come in right here, turn my boat off, set my boat up, and once I'm in, I like to fish this direction around it. Because it brings me into the final, the inside turn right here. And inside turns, folks, let's face it, fish use the inside turns under, under, um, under nasty weather conditions. They also will use them under steady weather conditions. They're just not forced to use them like they are when it's, uh, when it's really, really ugly out. Cold fronts, things of that nature. This area right here, um, again, it's, it's neck to neck where we're fishing. I don't give it near the amount of attention as I probably should. I'm spending most of my time right here. I have definitely cranked most of the humps and stuff in here um, with some success, not with a lot. But you get over here and the world becomes pretty again. This is very nice. Uh, I had actually had um, Joe Martisesh in here, the founder of the Pinpoint Trolling Motor. And uh, I took Joe, we were coming our way down there, we fished this, and we didn't do as well on it as I would liked. Um, I don't know why, they just didn't seem to be there. And I told Joe, I said, Joe, there's a food shelf just up here. It's not as pronounced as this reef. This, is, this reef right here has got jugs on it sometimes. But the food shelf that we're talking about, the food shelf right here, Joe pulled a Goliath off of this right here, out of the back of the boat. And it was an amazing fish. These fish that are moving in and out of here, there's a lot of Cisco, there's a lot of white fish and stuff in this narrow region. And when those currents start to move around in here, they agitate those populations and those fish become very, very predictable. Again, it's on the map, it's obvious, but you don't want to pass it up. This is a very good structure, and again, you'll fish all the way around and come in behind this. This is a large piece, it's not, it's not isolated. You, you literally will pull right up in here and fish this. Um, there are times that we have fished way down in here. Um, there was a time that we were in here and I was working a jackpot back in the corner pull five separate fish out of that corner in probably an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes, boated three of them. Going down the lake a little bit, getting to, getting to some of the magic we're going to talk about, this right here. This is critical. It's very critical. Um, if you were to talk to Sunny Fenton, she would tell you all day long, this is a spot number one right there. We're moving on down. Now all of these all of these rock points that we're looking at here, every one of them have have opportunity for you. If you're gonna fish those things though, I would spend more time on the ends. I, I myself personally wouldn't be crawling up and down the edges of them. However, broken up by structure like we're looking at right here. Again, I can spend three days in this region and never leave it, never leave it. But let's slide on down and get to the magic that we're talking about tonight. All right. We're coming down into here. Now, this is a rock structure that basically goes all the way across this. Uh, it, it's, it's probably... It's probably a football field to a football and a half field long, right through here. And out at the end of it, right where my map has been folded there, is a little sunken reef. And on the end of that is where, right here, is where I've seen the biggest fish in that complex. There we step back. Now, going into here... from right here into this, in that pocket right there. That pocket, I, again, just like the pocket I told you about further up the lake, when they're in there, there's a group of them or a school of them or a pot of them, whatever you want to call it, there can be six, seven, eight fish in there at one time. Now, on a map, this doesn't look at all 
as exciting as it really is. If you come down the lake and you're looking at this, you're seeing probably one of the most magical spots in all of Lake of the Woods, right here. This reef goes all the way across here. There is a little, there's a little opening right here. This is, this is actually a rock right here that sticks up. And there's actually a little saddle right here that water and fish both get through. This camelback that comes here to here is pretty much going to stop you from going across that. So you want to be very cautious if you come down into this area. This area right here, again, a little cove that's created by that saddle, by that camelback, sets up an absolutely magnificent place. It's got some cabbage in it. It's got some coontail milfoil stuff sticking up in it. It is crazy. But we're talking about current. So let's talk about this one of the most inconspicuous places on this entire map. It's inconspicuous because it doesn't seem to have a reef associated to it. Well, it doesn't have to. Because with the volume of water that's coming through here during either wind direction, it doesn't matter. The wind can be, wind, waves can be going, or the current can be going this way, or the current can be going this way. This area right here, is absolute magic and I'm going to show you what I mean. Let's catch up. Let's catch up in just a second and um, I'm going to show you Bob Jacobs. Uh, I fished with Bob, Bill and Gary in the past up here and their wives and uh, and I'm going to show you what we did there and we did it in pretty short notice. Look at that. Oh, big fish. Big fish! This side over here? Oh. That is a 50 fish. <laughs> Folks, you're seeing it right now. My 100th just came in the net at Witch Bay Camp. Holy smokes, Rocky. He ate that thing. Really hard for me to put down a jackpot when I got one talking to me. Yeah. I just really have a tough time with that. Never caught as many big fish as I have on one single lure as I, you know, as I have the jackpot. There you go, that's the shot. Right in there, Robert. One thing that I like doing with my jackpot is working the rod tip straight down and I work with about eight to ten inches of slack line off the rod tip. When my rod comes down and makes contact with that slack line, that's what initiates the lure, the action of swinging side by side, or side to side. And the whole purpose is to run that rod straight down toward the water when you're doing it. That's why I like running a six foot rod, that and the fact that I got the power necessary to handle and set hook any longer rod and I would be banging the water, you know, with the rod itself. Here we go. Oh, she went past it. What'd she do that for? In this example, my guest Bob Jacobs and I found ourselves relating the current far more than normal. Our conditions allowed us a wide assortment of productive lures, so guess what? On my rod would be the Pose Giant Jackpot. Our visual target was that of a crisp shoreline adjacent to a major point leading into a very deep water area with lots of natural current. Although the fish are comfortable in current, it stands to reason that they will hold in slack areas to rest. Areas such as this, with any quality vegetation, will be more productive. I watched her go sideways. Just looking at it. Yeah. There she is. Got her 
that time. She just, <laughs> this fish really tapped me. This is a different fish. You got a bunch of them in here. This is a different fish altogether. Is it? Yeah, look at her. Remember, remember I told you the first one was about 40? Yeah. This is her, maybe 45. We still got a bigger fish in here with her. I tell you, she's more than 45. <laughs> Here she comes. She's coming in. Yeah, she's over 45. She's more than 45. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a bigger fish in here, though, that had a black spot on the back when it came in. She's 49. Yeah, she's 40, Easy. She's probably 48, 49. <laughs> Man, I tell you, that fish really taxed me. She came up behind it. What people do, well, well, he's fighting with the fish, I'll tell you what the people do. People have a tendency when they're working a jackpot back to set a hook before you feel the fish, and that's where you make the mistake. You gotta wait till you feel the fish. I took it away from her back in the corner, I don't know if the same fish or not. But this one, we got her. Let's get her out of net for you. You can take the net back. Yes, indeed. Gotta turn her on. Oh, yes. <laughs> Get her? Got her good? Looks good to me. Okay, I'm going to get her back in the water. Yes! <laughs> oh. oh, that's a dandy. What do you think, Bobby? I think she's a catch. <laughs> Bring her back. Oh, hold on, hold on. Hi everyone, Bob Mason over here. You know, I've got a place, a very, very special place in my heart. It's Osborne Bay. It's been excellent. Uh, Randy did a great job, the guiding service. Randy started taking us out when I was 10. Catching big muskies ever since. The accommodations here are fantastic. Check out Century Lodge on Osborne Bay. Come on, bring her back. There, on your left, you can almost see it. One of the most magnificent sights on the planet, Lake Athabasca nestled just below the 60th parallel. Lake Athabasca hasn't changed in nearly a thousand years with its pristine shorelines, pure crystal clear water you can actually drink, and countless fish. Boy, has she got fish that is for everyone willing to travel to Other Side River Lodge. From the magnificent world-class northern pike that prowl these waters to the oldest and biggest lakers on the globe, Athabasca has it all. Other Side River Lodge caters to the true sportsman seeking an all-American plan guided package with three incredible meals a day and memories you won't find anywhere else. Records have been broken by guests at Other Side River Lodge in the past. You could be next. Book your dream trip of a lifetime to Other Side River Lodge, where fishing dreams do come true. Call Cliff or Stella toll-free at 1-877-922-0957. Well, folks, the spot I was telling you about is very, very important. And you'll notice that there was a boat, if you were paying attention to the video, there was a boat in the shot. That boat that was in the shot, they were walleye fishermen. Another indicator that what you're looking for is more than likely going to be there. There's nothing about these fish that are accidental. These fish lock up on certain places and they use them for many, many different reasons. But one of the reasons they use them is because of forage. The current allows them to lock in there, the forage is locked in there with them, and these fish take full advantage of it. Again, 
on the map, on the map, this is what we're looking at right here. Right there. That's what we're looking at. It was probably two nights later that I was pulling across here, the saddle itself, and stuck another 30-pounder off the top of that saddle, right on top of it. At the same time, we had a, one of our boats, a friend of ours that was not necessarily with us, but he was kind of following us around everywhere we went. He had pulled up into this corner, and I think they got a 44 or 45 out of there. Now, Corey Sko just, uh, he's, on, he's on the Facebook page tonight. Corey said they just got back from this region, and uh, as a result of it, he was pointing out to me that the vegetation that we've been talking about um, is really, really lacking. Now, vegetation comes and goes, folks. If you have a cold spring, um, if you have excessive currents, um, during the growth seasons and stuff, it will affect it. If you have fluctuating water levels, it will affect it. So be prepared that the vegetation you have on one trip may not exist on the next trip that you're going on. Um, I am not going to go through too much more on the map for you. Uh, to be quite frank with you, we've given you enough indicators on how to fish this region. I will ask you this. If you like what we're doing with the map tonight, please email me. Let us know. Let us know what you want us to do on the show. Let us know. We're working right now on a crankbait segment coming up. We're working to get uh, Jim Grant on. We need to be talking about rods. I had a gentleman today who purchased some Grant equipment and sent me a beautiful text. Uh, I'm going to get it over to Jim. Uh, this guy has got talents, been fishing with top-notch equipment all his life. He's now fishing with some Jim Grant custom rods, and he texts me today, and he says they're unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. So it's not coming from me. It's coming from somebody else. And I want to get Jim on the phone, and I want to get him on the show because we need to talk about the variables that are in the rod industry and uh, what that means to you. But before we do that, we're not done. Uh, no, 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 we're not done. Because remember I told you in the video that you were watching that we had seen another fish? Uh-huh. Well, sometimes you pull the boat, leave for 15, 20 minutes, and you come back and try to make hay. And guess what? Here you go. Oh, much hook we got in this girl. Oh, she's big. Oh, she's big. She's 50. This one's going to have to go to the net quick. She's got one hook in it, it looks like. She's kind of just, just wait there. I'll bring her to you. Not more than five feet from where we caught the first fish. She's 50, though. Yeah, I'm coming your way. I don't want her to blow up because she will go away. Net in the water. Net in the water. <laughs> Hang on to her. Hang on to her. <laughs> Hang on to her. <laughs> she is green, man. Let me tell you, she is green. <laughs> that is a green fish. That is also 50 plus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I told you we just throw a couple down this edge and see if we can get them to go. Holy smokes, Rocky. Uh, <laughs> let me get her out of the net, eh? Good job. <laughs> that's a 50 plus. Let's see, that's 74 over 50. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Can you get her? Went out, went out. Go, go horizontal with it. Turn the camera. Okay. There you go. Give it a second, it'll come up. There you go. How's it look? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to get her back. Whew. You ready? I'll put her back. Another one? No, it's okay. Oh, girl, you are a big girl. Oh. Oh. Big girl. 
That's a beautiful fish. Let's see, 52, 53? What do you think? 53. That's a beautiful fish, isn't it? 53. Yeah. Is that a beautiful fish or what? With that being said, folks, I know you're antsy other than heck to go fish some of these big fish. I want you to stop up and see Steve Gale at Witch Bay because they'll help you out for sure. Oh, look at that. Oh, big fish. Big fish. Is that over here? Is a 50 fish. <laughs> Folks, you're seeing it right now. My 100 just came in the net at Witch Bay Camp. Holy smokes, Rocky. He ate that thing. And I want to have just a little bit of fun, folks. Like I said, you never know what's creeping in the water. This is a hookless lure, so don't panic. But imagine if this thing would have actually got a hold of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what fun would that have been. Oh, goodness. Hey, this is Bob Mesocomer saying thanks for watching tonight. I appreciate you letting us come into your private household or into your private carry device or wherever you're watching us. It's a global world out there nowadays, and people watch us on many, many different elements. That said, hey, let's bust out of the thousand viewers that we have on this uh, Facebook page. Get on the horn. Get on your s websites and uh, help us grow. Uh, also, my email is Bob M. Oh, it's Bob dot M at fishandstickstv.com. Send me over your name if you'll let us share and uh, broadcast what we're doing on your pages or sites. It would be greatly appreciated. That's how we're going to grow. It is. I mean, it's the way we're going to go future, period. It is what it is. I'm sorry. Interacting with us is always fun, if you would. We've had a few people chime in tonight. Fact is, we had a few callers when we had our issues earlier on that were letting us know we had the issues. Otherwise, we wouldn't have known. Um, follow us on Facebook. The email, again, is bob.m at fishandsticks.com, um, fishandstickstv.com. And uh, I guess I'm pretty much out of it. I just don't have much to say except that if you want to go up and fish some of these waters we've shown you some great places to do it. You All you have to do is tow a boat up there and uh, cast the bait. That being said, God bless everybody. We'll see you next week. Crankbaits, rods, reels, and I've got a gentleman I'm talking to over in Europe that's going to come on the show with us as too. So we're going to have some fun. We will uh, we'll see you all next week. There, on your left, you can almost see it. One of the most magnificent sights on the planet, Lake Athabasca nestled just below the 60th parallel. Lake Athabasca hasn't changed in nearly a thousand years with its pristine shorelines, pure crystal clear water you can actually drink, and countless fish. Boy, has she got fish that is for everyone willing to travel to Other Side River Lodge. From the magnificent world-class northern pike that prowl these waters to the oldest and biggest lakers on the globe, Athabasca has it all. Other Side River Lodge caters to the true sportsman seeking an all-American plan guided package with three incredible meals a day and memories you won't find anywhere else. Records have been broken by guests at Other Side River Lodge in the past. You could be next. Book your dream trip of a lifetime to Other Side River Lodge, where fishing dreams do come true. Call Cliff or Stella toll-free at 1-877-922-0957. Bring her back. Oh, hold tight, hold tight. Hi, everyone. Bob Mason over here. You know, I've got a place, a very, very special place in my heart. It's Osborne Bay. It's been excellent. Uh, Randy did a great job guiding service. Randy started taking us out when I was 10 catching big muskies ever since. The accommodations here are fantastic. Check out Century Lodge on Osborne Bay. The summer sun never sets upon the Alaskan pike of the Unoka, in the heart of breathtaking Alaska. Evenings will be shared reliving the battles of monster pike. The midnight sun trophy pike hunt is on aboard the 67-foot luxury houseboat, and you're in command. If you're not, you should be. 
Contact the Midnight Sun Trophy Pike Adventures by calling 800-440-7453 or email them at mstpa50 at gmail.com. Hi everyone, Bob Nasekomer here for Grant Rods. You know, musky fishing's a tough deal. And the job's not done till she's in the bag. Well, how do you do that? It's pretty simple. You need big dog rods from Grant Rods. For your next ride, call them at 847-577-0848. Building custom rods since 1983. Look at that. Oh, big fish. Big fish! This side over here? <laughs> Folks, you're seeing it right now. My 100 just came in the net at Witch Bay Camp. Holy smokes, Rocky. He ate that thing. Without those people, folks, we wouldn't be here. If you would, give them a call. Book your trip there, buy their products, help support what they're doing in the fact that they're supporting us. And that being said, good night. <laughs>